Welcome back, everybody, to Six Invitational 2024. Game one is complete on both A stream and B stream, and we're ready to kick things off with game number two. Today's big story is Elimination Day. We already had two teams knocked out of the Invitational, a little bracket, and we're going to keep it up. Hello, welcome back to the desk. I'm Yosh. With me are, Fa are Fresh and Fabian. Why How is everyone doing? going with that order? Why is it never Fabian and Fresh? Because it's always Fabian and Fresh. Yeah, it's true. We're, we're better. Um, the, like, you need to start with a better person. Thank that. you very much. I mean, you are better today because you're wearing my pants, so... True. That actually makes you superior. What? Yeah, he is wearing I wish I wore your underwear, too. Well, never mind. Let's I, move I, on. I, going I on. said maybe, but anyways, let's go through things with our matchup here, because we're going to start off with Falcons. There's a lot to talk about about the squad here, and Liquid, on the other hand, also have their kind of pitfalls that we're going to dig deep into. So, Falcons, okay? That's a huge roster that these players are bringing. Let's be very honest. Here to the lower bracket, uh, Penta, your team, had six players. Having eight is another level. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know what's really going on. I mean, we know the visa issues were there, but having eight players and then getting all the players to come here and then still swapping players in the middle of the event, none of it really makes any sense. I mean, we're looking at eight players. Quibs and JLAD have both played nine maps. P9 and Okils have played seven maps. Madskills have played five maps. Valentino have played four maps. And Bursa and Leader have played two maps. That's just a complete mess. And it's strange how they managed to swap that much. I think, yeah, I think the, the inconsistency is what plagued Falcons in terms of their player base. You know, we, we haven't seen Joker, for example. You know, the starting lineup coming into this tournament was different two months before the tournament, one month before the tournament, and the week of the tournament. Obviously, these are issues aside, like you say, that can't be helped with Bursa having to come in and step in. but. It, it really does create inconsistency for them. And I don't know how you expect long-term results with inconsistency. I'm just waiting for Twister to jump in on the map so we have nine. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if that were to happen. Actually, let's talk about uh, two specific players here, Matskills and Valentino. And uh, I'll preface this because Valentino is the first ever Lebanese player to compete. I am a Lebanese person with a horrendous passport just like him, <laughs> and we both made it here. So big ups, big ups. Vamos. <laughs> Vamos, Matthew. that's what we say in Lebanon. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the, the reason that we wanted to compare these two players was that Mad Skills was the, the starting lineup that Falcons intended to play this tournament with had Mad Skills in it, and they wanted to play, I would say, a little bit more strategical depth akin to a European style. Mm -hmm. um, Mad Skills obviously benched himself to allow Valentino in for the Scars game to get through into this bracket. Now, when I spoke to Valentino, it was all around, right, we want to go back to what made Falcons good this year and last year. You know, when they played Gamers 8, they did bo well both years, mm -hmm. obviously Copenhagen. We want to go back to that. And that style is its very simple. It's very simple siege. It's, you could argue it's shallow strategical depth, but on top of that, it's together. It's very aggressive. It's very gunfight heavy. And that's what these players know. And that's what these players want. And they think will give them the most success. And before you get that strategical depth, you need to perfect the way you want to start playing. Absolutely. Because you start playing in one way and then you add on to that. You can't just have five different play styles where all of them are not the greatest. All right, so final bits here. We have to highlight 2023 for Falcons. Mentioned it from this squad that, you know, first started playing internationally, like literally 2023. That's huge. To, to get here and I'll play majors, get to SI. Yeah, I think if you set out goals for the year, which every single team does at the start of the year, Falcons, let, let's remember, you know, 12 months ago, they were not in a league that was officially recognized inside of the circuit or the ecosystem. So what happens? They come into it, Mena League starts, they get themselves to the major, they get themselves to SI, that's massive. Let's talk about Liquid then on the other side because they fell short of expectations and they're here to survive, Fabian. Yeah, they have fallen short of expectations and I'm not seeing the team that I'm expecting to see with all of this experience that they have, all the players they have. I mean, you look at just Paolo, Nesk, Wolf, Lagones, Reese, all of them are super experienced players, very talented players but they're just not seeming to get it working during their attacks. And it's quite a shame because we expect more. It was a big recency bias thing for me was they were, like expectations for Liquid below this event because of the fact they didn't make Atlanta. But if you go back to Copenhagen, they made the final. They're a quality team, but they fell short in Copenhagen. They, it feels like they're falling short here again. Yeah. And what's, what's the strategy piece for this? There has to be something that breaks it. I, I think the one thing that we can differentiate, if you take Liquid and you take, say, for example, W7M or FaZe on each side, I think the difference between the two teams is that W7M and FaZe can react to their opponents and change tempo and change strategy. They can go from a default to a split take very quickly inside of the round. Liquid haven't been showing us that. Yeah, it's like they pick the strat, follow it blindly and hope for the best, and they have no change to it. We're also looking at poor individual performance 
bonus was from Volps and Lagonis being minus 26 and minus 33 in order. So we need to see them step up as individuals on top of all of this strategical depth that we want to see from them. Because I do think they have it, they just need to start showing it. All right, with that said, there is a lot of pressure on Team Liquid, is what I'm hearing from the two of you. And of course, the fact that Brazil, outside of W7M here, have been a bit shaky. So let's see, maybe, potentially, what maps we're going to be playing on in this game. Because uh, I got to say, Liquid, uh, th yeah, they might have a quote-unquote easier matchup against Falcons, but still, that pressure can get to you. Consulate, Cafe Labs, and Clubhouse will be taken out first. Oregon is our first pick. That is for Falcons. Liquid will start off on defense. Nothing, nothing surprising there. The follow-up, Liquid pick on border with uh, Falcons on attack. And with our last two bands, Shelly Skyscraper will be left on a bank. Fresh. Every map is curious for me. Um, so the first one in terms of Oregon is probably the most straightforward out of the three. Falcons have obviously picked into Oregon, highest preference by far, but also Liquid have struggled on this map at the event. They've lost it twice at this event. So it makes sense that Falcons would want to go to that map. Now, Liquid are picking Border because it's a very high preference map for them and it's very comfortable. However, they've looked at it and it was their most successful map at this event as well for Liquid because they got that 7-2 victory against Virtus Pro. Falcons have played it a few times with many different rosters as we spoke about and had mixed results on the map. The big one for me, Fabian, is the decider of bank because Liquid had the choice of Skyscraper, which is Falcon's absolute permaban, have not played it since stage one, or bank, which Liquid don't like, haven't won recently. Liquid have gone to bank. Oregon, yeah. Fabian. Well, Oregon makes sense because Liquid, would, you would never say no to starting Oregon defense. That's just never going to happen, right? Bank, as Jack's saying, being the most interesting map, I think that bank needs a lot of the steps by steps gameplay that you might not have when you're going for a more aggressive, less strategical depth on turn terms of Falcons, so I think that it's a good map for Liquid. They must have just seen something that they want to abuse from them when they played it last. All right, well, now the big question is, is there a possibility for a map three, or can Liquid sweep this 2-0? Is that what they're looking for? Is it going to be a bit shaky in the map? What do you expect? So the expectations for me is like, Falcons are no pressure, right? Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. They're here, they've done their goal. They've probably gotten further than most people would expect of them, especially with all these roster changes. I think it's going to be a 2-0 Liquid, even though they have all the pressure from being the Brazilian Darlings. I love, I love Falcons as a Mena team. I think they've been great all year, the last two years, to be fair. And when they get the momentum rolling, they can take this three maps. I think it's more competitive than people will think. Okay, what would set things apart for Oregon? I mean, Liquid start on defense. Are we expecting Falcons to maybe break through that on their attack? I think, it, I think it's genuinely the momentum. I think mm -hmm. both of these teams are going to be big momentum teams inside of this. So obviously, defender meta at the SI, defense is going to be huge. We see Paulo happy today. Do you think he can take it? I don't know if he's going to be happy. Mood swing. I just, I, the, the one key thing that I think that, first of all, before you even get that strategical depth, it's that both Volps and Lagonis, they just need to step up. That, that's simply where it's, I draw. Especially Volps. You, yeah. you can maybe argue Lagonis a little bit more on the support role, sure. the eye gelling, especially. But at the same time, we're seeing this event that supports can also frag out True. crazily. Absolutely. So it's not an excuse for it. <laughs> supports these days, they're just as much fragger as they are support, but they might be utilized later into the round and I don't think we're seeing that. Has Nest lived up to expectations? I don't think so. I think none of Liquid have, no. in all honesty. None of them. Um, you know, we, we spoke about them being the darlings of Brazil and how much support that they will get from Brazil. However, when have Liquid fallen short, it's been pressure and they're in a high pressure situation right now. All right, gentlemen, our game is ready and pressure is mounting. It is a second elimination game for today. Liquid versus Falcons. Ace and Dez, take it away. Thank you very much, Milos. Yes, welcome over to the casting desk. Come, Des. This is Tim. And this is a game that I think on paper, people look at and think messy, but I think it could be a real brawl to see who gets the absolute privilege of going to the next round to play against G2, Tim. I mean, it's not its not the best prospect to look yeah. forward to, is it? You, know you can what? play your skins out here and then you come up against the defending world champions in the next round. Oh, well, the stinger. socials are well and truly firmly locked in on the side of Team Liquid. No surprises, really. 82 to 18, Falcons. Um, the thing is with the Fal Team Falcons, you've got to remember, you know, over the last 12 months that we've seen them at these international events, they've shown us that they are capable of an upset. Obviously here at SI, there has been some sort of roster juggling and that's not going to make things easy for them. But Liquid have also shown weaknesses. You know, there's no two ways about that. I, as much as anybody, would love to see Liquid on the stage, as I'm sure all the Brazilian fans would, but they are not making it easy. Um, and there's, uh, there's definitely some improvement needed for them. So we'll see who can step up the most today when it really, really counts. A reminder of the stakes, we are going to lose eight 
teams today. We are all lower bracket, so everybody who loses packs up and goes home. It is as big a deal as it gets right now. It's been such like a chill time so far. It's been like, you know, four days yeah. of groups and, oh, one team goes home. It's not the end of the world. You go into yesterday and no one's going home. It's all up a bracket shenanigans. Everyone's having a good time. And then you step in today and it just feels like the elimination chamber where you will not be around for long if even the smallest slip up goes through. Anyway, our up bands are flowing on through, Tim. I think for this one, we cast Dark Zero versus Liquid yesterday as well, and we had a lot of comments about Liquid. I think on the attacking side of things, you know, I hate to single him out here, but Bolts was a real problem. Often stepping a bit too far inside the building on very key operators like Ying, like Capital, like Blitz, even some rounds on the book, and just getting picked off for free by Dark Zero, who were roaming above him. And it's like, guys, you know, on drones, you'd know this player is upstairs. So for me, I'm looking at this and thinking for Falcons when they go on the defensive side, which won't be until the second half, you may well see them trying to disrupt and get rid of a couple of those entries on the side of Liquid. And on the defensive side, you know, I was speaking to Emmy yesterday about this as well, about the DZ and Liquid game, and said, I don't really feel like Liquid did anything strictly wrong on the defense. The problem was they're playing the same defense that everyone else the tournament has been playing so far, and how that then gets determined to be good or bad, or the results you get really, comes down to how good the enemy team is at attacking. And Falcons might not be the strongest attacking team, given the constant changes in roster we've spoken about, given we are down here in the lower bracket, but then finishing fourth in their group. So I think Liquid could be on for an okay ride here in this first half, but don't count Falcons out when their backs are against the wall and this is the elimination game. Just looking at that defensive setup for Team Liquid. We've got the Valkyrie brought immediately by Nesk. Not too much of a surprise. Azami as well, Warden in there. Um, we saw when they played Dark Zero, the Warden was almost completely ineffective, really, for Team Liquid. And I'm wondering whether Falcons have sort of taken a leaf out of that book and thought, this is how we're going to deal with it. They don't have the Thatcher on board this time, so it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And Palu might just get a little bit more joy on that operator today. He went have too much to worry about. It's the smokes of the Capitao and three flashbangs in the back pocket of Quibs. Like, there's not really lots on side, whereas against Dark Zero, you're either coming up against nine flashbangs or Ying every single round. Now, the Ying is available. We do keep on speaking about it because teams that use Ying well are traumatic, is the only way I can describe it. Especially when paired up with that Thatcher, as you say, to disable but things we'll like the Warden's down. Gadget so that the Ying does get everyone and you can flood in and take any rooms on the site that you need to. For now, at least, though, Falcon's taking a much slower approach, looking in towards the Flores, the setup work that needs to come out of the Capital, for example. I'm wondering why the Asher thing for P9, upgraded version of people. Normally you see that come along when there's a mirror and really only in that situation. So a couple of picks I'm looking at this round for Falcons and thinking, all right, it's first round, we'll, we'll bet into this, but I imagine this won't stick throughout the entire map. Falcons are moving well, halfway into the round. They've got themselves map control, they've got the meeting hatch open. Um, so, so far, so good. They need to start moving liquid around now. They've got the utility, they've got the hatches open, they've got what they need. It's time to pick up a kill or two and start uh, just creating that little bit of space that you need. Valentino's actually going to be pushing, you just see him on the right-hand side of your screen there and we get the POV. Going to be pushing down laundry stairs, so I like this. We've got a number of avenues of attack. All kills is heading down the rear stage stairs. We've got pressure on the meeting hatch, so Liquid are going to be under the hammer pretty soon. They are. It's been two minutes of set up. No Habana on side as well, of course, worth noting. Normally see that for this site, but I've relied solely on those hard breach gadgets in back pocket, and so far, so good. No one got picked off early. And so they have been able to get themselves the full setup they need. This is the best shot the attackers are really going to have, I feel, with all players alive, all utility in pocket. And looking at J Lad here, you can see the highlight in his gadget on the left hand side of your screen. First smoke comes out, and I'll no doubt start singing through for more. This is when the push should come through. Five versus four, then as Lagonis manages to pick up P9, the kills start raining in a bloodbath as expected. Palu getting the latest one onto Gillard, and Volps just trying mm. to hold on to Elbow here, tickling the Nitro, but he knows he can't swing with it. He knows that his angle is being held, but Falcons, they're just stalling out this 15 seconds, and they're not go. really pushing here. They're in electrical, they're in Elbow, but they're not making any ground, and it allows Volps to get aggressive. Seven seconds left to go, and now they start pushing into those liquid lines of sight. They they go down one, two, three like dominoes, and Liquid take the first round. In the game that we cast last night, Tim, the main description I had at certain points was toothless, and that was where you had the game uh, between Virtus Pro and Remind Me, Tim. 
Who did we cast last night? Virtus Pro and IP. And Toothless was really the way that we came about describing it. And I worry that with that first attack, it's very early on to say this, by the way. I'm very aware things can change and they may well change up the attacking line that they bring. But it did lack a little bit of bite. And I love the fact that they had the Grim, that they had the Capital coming into this. They had the ability to weaken the defender positions with things like the Flores, but didn't really see much that put to good use. We saw a little bit of the Capital coming out, the Grim. We heard the bees being down, but no real massive movements coming out of the defender. Defenders, they still sat and held in the same positions. And I think Volks, they got a little bit scared of him, sat on elbow as well. Didn't want to push into that shotgun. Baited it out a little bit later on, but this is the problem when the team is moving a little bit out of sync. You just see separate 1v1s being taken quite a lot of the time and nothing really to follow up off the back of it. So a very comfortable first round for Liquid. Falcons, I'm hoping that this doesn't turn into a trend of... I tell you what, they're feeling it today, Tim. <laughs> I saw them sat behind the desk, is the thing, and they were all looking happy, like Paolo had a massive smile on his face, and I was like, it's good to see them coming in with the right attitude and not still feeling too beaten up. Exactly that, and the thing is, you're on home soil, you're playing in the Six Invitational, yep. no everything hasn't gone to plan so far, but... You know, this is this is pretty much as good as it gets. You know, yeah. a lot of teams don't make it here. So, exactly, I love to see it. Smile on the face, go out there, play your game. They know that they're good enough to go further in this. As it stands, they're going to need to win three games now to get themselves to that live stage. So there is a long way for them to go, but they can only win the one in front of them. And that was a great start. In <laughs> and then they got to win the next one against G2, Tim. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we'll worry about that in a few hours' time. They've got to beat Balkans first. It was a good first round from them. They held Reloading. on, it's going to be top Have floor me. this time. Um, Liquid pretty much all on site. Volps on the Solis is the one um, that is roaming around underneath, currently mm. meeting in rear stage area, but uh, we'll likely see him as he comes into things later in the game. For the time being, P9, he's going to be just he's trying to hold for up a to this peak in big tower, actually. He's looking for the, not really a sport peak at this point, is it? More looking to try and find someone, and that's exactly go. what he'll get. Quibs, and this is always the danger of Too playing against the Solis. She'll take out all these drones. You won't be able to keep track of her all round long. You already got a Twitch drone extremely early on as well just really chewed through everything and as you say a little bit too easy that he's been able to go from playing around by showers all the way up through meeting up through green straight up big tower and to get a freebie kill without any response on the other side yeah he's made the pay for that yeah, 100%. Uh, we're going to see Zell like just this. able to <laughs> hold a nice angle around that Kiba barricade. And just like angles, Kiba barricades work in both directions. Doom. You know, yes, if you put them on the doors like that, you're offering an opportunity for attackers to get up there and get themselves a little bit of cover as well. One minute ten now as Falcons continue trying to work forward. They haven't really softened up sight at all. Um, there's only Orkills and Jalad over that side at the minute trying to sort of hold on to this area whilst I think more support comes but there's no real pressure on no. anybody inside a site as Volps managed to Hold pick up down. Valentino. He's still a nightmare down in Kitchen. They've got the vertical denial. Wow. This could be a flawless round, and it will be as resets and Volts. They managed to pick up one apiece, and Liquid, they are looking like they mean business so far today. And let's not forget, they're on Oregon, a map that they've lost every time they've played it so far at SI. If anything, this should be where Falcons can get something going. Yeah, I think on the attacking side, they are struggling a little bit. I'm not not at all surprised to see even just two rounds in that we've got attack time out coming through because again it looks a little bit separate it looks a little bit desperate in places as well you've lost both of your hard breaches very early in the round so you are not getting open the things that need to be opened up i'm thinking about getting inside a big tower potentially and working your way down attic i'm thinking of course about walking wardrobe to open up games things like that nothing is going to go your way when you lose those two operators so early on but to give full credit to vaults he has had an absolute field day and played the game that was put before him there from showers up to big tower to get the first kill back down towards showers to get valentino in the back and turned it into a third k a 3k in the round as well just all too easy for him and again it's a player that was wanting to keep a close eye on today more on their attack inside but starting on defense strong is never going to be a bad thing for your confidence going into the second half Absolutely, we'll be moving into round three then as the tack timeout runs out. We just get our highlights and you just see how easy it was for Volps there. And a little bit of frustration creeping in on the side of Falcons. Um, yeah, Quibs weren't too happy about that. No, not too happy at all. <laughs> that was a great it, shot. It's no wonder because 
I, you know, I've written in my notes there that it was just poor droning. You have to know where Volps is. Solis is up on the board. You're playing on Oregon. It's a given on the top floor that Solis will be playing underneath. So if Solis isn't in kitchen, say you send your drones into kitchen and uh, into uh, security where you would expect the Solis to be for that vertical denial, you send the drones in. There's your little uh, animation that you love so much, does. Uh, you know, you send your drones into that area and Solis isn't there. That should be ringing alarm bells for the team to say, where is the Solis? They're not going to be on site. They're going to be playing underneath. But Falcons haven't gone that extra step to go and find them. And if your drones keep getting shot out in Big Tower, for example, guess what? That probably means that the Solis is in Big Tower. And I think that's something that Falcons... I'm going to be watching the drone economy very, very closely in this round because they, they must have picked up on that and they need to improve that immediately. I'm looking at this round and for a second we almost saw a stick on the Thatcher and I thought, wicked. We've got the Ying, we've got the Thatcher coming out. That combo that we were speaking about. Brilliant. You know, they've got the Twitch to deal with the mirror, for example, but they have changed things away, and this might well be a fast hit coming on through here if we're not too careful. The mirror, I was looking at thing, and that's what the Ash is great for, and maybe we'll see the Ying coming in. Here we go. Two Candela's ring on out. P9 straight in. A good coordinated push, but Volps, he just kind of hangs back a little bit on his way out the, front, out the back door and just goes, you know what? The freebie, and I'll take it. Down white stairs he goes. No one can collapse onto him. Really well played by him, and he's dipped away to rejoin the rest of his team. So despite a good coordinated play coming out from Falcons, Liquid still come out on top. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes you have to trust in your utility. You have to think the Candela's going in, I'm going to commit to this, but you must remember that it is possible for that utility to be avoided, and Volps has done a fantastic job of that. Two rounds in a row that he's got the entry, four and one now, resets four and zero. Uh, you know, this is is uh, a good sign for Liquid because, you know, we know the quality that Nesk and Palo Bridge. deliver. Bridge. We know, um, you know, that Lagonis is solid on the back line, but we need the whole team firing if they are going to continue progressing and especially, you know, looking beyond this game, I don't want to get carried away, it's only 2-0 at this point, um, you know, but as you've already said, there's a bit of a raid boss coming up for whoever wins this, so, you know, whoever wins this, the point is valid for Liquid right now, but if Falcons are able to turn things around, they need to have all players online and warmed up nicely if they're going to have a chance against G2 later. The thing is, they're trying to track Ghost at this point, it feels like, Tim, like, even just seeing Valentino yeah. pause and watch Laundry just shows that they don't have full awareness of the map and admittedly, that's exactly Exactly why you bring a solar. Drop the bomb. I mean, okay. Going to a great spot there. It's going to be a near flawless round if not for the closing trade. Another very comfortable one coming out from Liquid. Even after that timeout, Falcons still not quite able to put the pieces together, but it at least looked better with the Amaro and Ying play coming on through. They just didn't get any results from it. No, no I, yeah, I won't criticise for that. I think, you know, you've come away from it. You've tried something different, a different round. That probably works. You go yeah. in, you get the kill onto Volps, you get a bit of top floor control um, and fantastic. Yeah, no problem. So not really a, a, a criticism of Falcons there, but more a, a credit to Liquid, really, that no matter what's being thrown at them, they're dealing with it very comfortably at the minute. There's, there's no real sort of panic to them. There's no uh, desperation. They're confident in their setup. But they're confident in their defence and right now it's looking like it's going to be very difficult for Falcons to potentially even pick up an attack here. It does feel that way. Really, the best time to do it is after attack timeout. The best thing, I guess, somewhat being here is now that you get the same three sites again. So they've played them all once. Liquid will rotate back through the same three sites. At least you'd expect so. They're going to start things off down in the basement. Same as where we started round one. And already there's a good lineup change coming out from Falcons here. Willing to try something a little bit different. Keeping the Capitao on side. Keeping the Grim there as well. Well, but making sure now they've got that Ying, they've got the Blitz on side, the IQ for the Valkyrie, really starting to take note here of what it is that is costing them rounds. The best time to win a round was after the tack timeout. The next best time, time is, is now. now. Yes, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Definitely the case for Falcons here. Um, let's see whether they can get the job done or not. They're going to be attacking onto the basement. Last time around, it took them far too long. Uh, a minute and a half. Uh, they had the hatches open. They were pushing down laundry stairs. They were doing really well. But then it came down to a last 15 second push and Liquid just would not be moved from that bottom floor. So Falcons once again coming in, doing their work quickly. Uh, this is, you know, a good start to the attack. They've got Liquid down on the basement. I think they're pretty confident of everything that's ahead of them. They know that they've got mid-floor control. Nothing to worry about there. Hatches start getting opened. They've got all the time in the world. Let's see you use it, Falcons. That's it. I mean, to be fair, they had a lot of time back on the first attack. A good two minutes they had to get things set up and then start thinking about the execute. And they were, they, they started, well, good. I think they about 30 seconds left. They started off their execute. Just got a little bit held up by Volts, who was playing on elbow, like we commented back in round one. Really, for me, 
the Ying keep on speaking about it, and for very good reason. Teams that know how to use this operator well, or I guess in G2's case, less leaning in towards things like the Ying, but a lot of flashbangs and secondary utility. Those are the teams that so far have done incredibly well. So oppressive when three of your four, three of your five players are dying full white screen throughout the round. And so that's what Falcons need to aim for here is to overwhelm Liquid. Yes, you've got to try and deal with Parlo, and you don't have an easy answer to him right now, but you can at least keep him Push back with the Grim, with the Capital, so everyone else can get punished. Going to be working down rear stage stairs pretty soon. As you say, it's all about pushing back. It's all about forcing Liquid out of their positions, out of their comfort spots. As I always say, remember, when you set up as a defender, you're setting up in your absolute number one spot. Nobody's going to choice three. You know, you're setting up in your absolute power position. So the more that you can move Liquid round, the more that you're moving them push, into Tim. weaker spots. They're going for freezer. They're going for laundry. They've gone for big tower stairs. They've gone for construction. They've got e-box player. They've got everything going on here to try and work out for them. If they can make this work out, That'll be beautiful, but one falls, two falls. All they've really got left here is the south side, Tim. They have no idea about resets, and they had the Grim on this angle earlier on, but nothing can be done to stop it. And now all they've got left is the two freezer players. There's probably such, there's a such thing as too much of a good thing to have been trying to do. It's a bit too much there, I feel, as a team, when playing for trades may well have been the way to success, as we saw with that only kill onto resets inside of sites itself. P9 can see nothing, those keeper barriers just so kill. oppressive. It's all down to O kills here to. Well, not quite live up to his name, quite the opposite, Bobby actually, Max. but turn it into a few more kills in the round. He's found two, but has got to convert three more. Going to be cut down as he comes around. The keeper barricade. Uh, and again, as you say, I think, you know, we've got to give credit to Liquid here. Fantastic use of that as army so far. Mm. Um, really making life difficult. We've had Volps on the Solace as well. We know how powerful these operators are. Liquid are leaning into it, and they're doing a great job of displaying just exactly why they are so powerful. Uh, and Liquid as well, for me, they're just doing a great job of collapsing at the right time. They see that opportunity. It's never one kill. It's one, two, three, and all of a sudden it's 5v2 and the round's broken. You know, 4v2 and it's, it's Falcons on the back foot. So Liquid again doing a very good job of, I think, that call of like, right, push them now. This is the point. And just recognising sort of that point of most danger for Falcons and taking advantage of it. It just feels like they're always one step ahead. Like every single round, there's a new threat they're bringing along. You know, think about back to round two when the Solus of Volts made an appearance. Absolutely terrorized that round. They had the tactical timeout and then started looking at, okay, can we bring the Ying along? Sure, but they still managed to find a response to that as well. Back in round one, even clearing out hard breaches. Sorry, round two, clearing out the hard breaches as well. You know, they've always just had something that seems to be upset on the other side. And now Falcons might look at that last round and go, okay, then we've just been really upset by Kiba barriers. Do we find a response now to the Azami? And it's like, well, you could try, but you've also got to worry about the mirror they're bringing along. You've got to worry about the Solus that's running around the map. You've got to try and find a way to deal with the Warden, which, interestingly enough, this is the first time that we're seeing Liquid not bringing that operator along. So every round, even when it starts to feel like Falcons get close to figuring out and catching up with Liquid, Liquid have made five steps forward and now you're suddenly trying to figure out that massive gap that exists between you again. So Liquid just really in control of this defensive half. I kind of feel as well like, and, and this is this is kind of me... Carlo absolutely slams Valentino off the rappel to kick things off for us in this round. Um, to finish my point that I was making, I, I feel like this is like nostalgia me kicking in. you got to remember, I've been casting this Liquid team for, for four plus years now um, in, you know, varying rosters and everything else. But I just feel like taking them to Oregon is a risk one way or another. You know, they've always been very competent on this map, or at least it feels like that to me. We've seen some big wins, big losses for them, but you're never going to have an easy time of it. And this short Showing us why right now, Palu steps through and hits P9. These are players that have been in siege for a long time, and this is a map that's been in siege for a long time. They know every single corner of it, in and out. And I feel like, you know, yes, they might have been beaten here a couple of times, but I just feel like that's maybe more about their performances than their ability as a team, and they're really starting to show us that. Four versus three, as Clues manages to get that kill onto Palu as a late trade. That's good, it's going to create a little bit of space for Falcons. Palu was playing in and around game, and a second from Jalad just looking to move in through Attic. Great stuff, but he's got Nesk to come up against next, and he is super low health, so much so that he's bailed. The problem is when you're losing players early, like Valentino going down, he was the counter to that mirror that's in Trophy. And at this point, that is not going to get removed because they needed him inside Master Bedroom. He was helping to get set up inside the games until Palu just Ferrari beats him with the SMG and brought him down. After that, they're a little bit like, well, what else can we do? You look towards the ace, for example, great, but there's a mute gem on the wall. There's not all that much you can do to get it opened up at that point. 
And so really all Liquid again have done is just sit and say, well, you know what? We can just play behind basics at this point now that the Ash has been removed. They've got the two mirror windows facing outwards as well, so a little bit of a different approach to where you're placing those because they don't expect to get pushed from exactly where Nesk is looking now up in towards Attic. So that has become their bastion pit. It's where they have set up this defense and Falcons have fallen to it. So at the minute, the way that the Falcons attack is shaping up, they've got one here on Breach or Kills. They've got the Candelas coming in from Double Window and Jalad is underneath on the book trying to get something going. Yeah. Or Kills is going to take the opportunity to try and put this diffuser down. Or Kills on the cover from top the That's behind. an important spot, but Lagornis manages to find him. Quibs onto Nesk. Two versus two, but the diffuser has not yet gone down. Or Kills had to come off it because he knew that the challenge was coming after White Stairs was taken out. Lagornis is just trying to work his way back in oh, here. Well, and that is... It's a big retake moment from Volks there, leaving it now. One versus one. Can Lagornis hold on? They knew exactly where he was, but Lagornis plays it super smart with one HP. Gets, gets himself out of the way. Lagornis, don't do that to me! Gets himself out of the way on one HP. He knows that the, the time is ticking down. He's got one eye on the clock. He's got teammates calling it out to him. Well played from Liquid, but the closest attack we've seen yet from Falcons. It was a better, a better attempt from them. From a losing position, that was a really good recovery. Yeah, I mean, Smoking out inside, just showing out the kids' walls, they couldn't do anything about it. You had the Ying Candelas going in towards kids as well. So that just forced the two players that were in there to scarper somewhat. Lagonis actually with the real heads up play, rather than, kill. rather than tucking away inside of the bunk itself and hiding in behind the beds, he actually dropped straight through the hatch, came up behind White Stairs and got a kill there. That's what really broke the back of that attack for Falcons and why suddenly O kills could no longer plant inside of games. So if not for him and this flank here that you're seeing yeah. on screen right now, that round feels a hell of a lot messier. It's a really good play by the mirror. Yeah, just straight away forced Orkills kills off the diffuser. You just know if Jalad can hold that position, Orkills kills gets the diffuser down. That could look like a very different round for Liquid. Um, if you remember, I said it yesterday when they were playing against Dark Zero. Genuinely, for my money over the years, Lagonis is one of the best sight players that we've had in Siege. His, his knowledge and ability to hold on and make smart decisions in that final 30 seconds from inside of sight um, is, is fantastic and he's just shown it there with that you know a lot of people it's easy to get locked into the site at that point and think what can i do from where i am right now rather than thinking there's a hatch available there's you know verticality that i can use here i can change things up um, and thinking about the entire landscape and it was really heads up from uh, lagon mm. as well played just tell you a lot about how dominant they could have been this half though you know we're five rounds in at this point and there are what nine kills i think coming in for the entirety of falcons less than two on average per round and that gives you the idea of just how dominant liquid have been across these first five now into the final one of the half An interesting thought to bring along the uh, sledge here i'm guessing they want the nades on side to get rid of any potential shields or something but I'm not really seeing anything on the side of Liquid that you'd use other than trying to make the defenders move away because you're lacking things like the Grim in this round. Yeah, you know, very low pick rate for Sledge ever since we've had that nade nerf. I think really what you're looking at instead now is more towards the Buck, who has been incredibly strong throughout this tournament. In fact, as of the end of groups, I believe he was the most picked attacker throughout the entire competition. Vox has got himself all the way down in basement once again. We've seen the impact um, of the uh, sort of lack of ability to draw him four left on the side of Falcons. So they are going to be starved of information. No Bravas, no Twitch. Um, they will have some availability, I guess, for it. You know, they can check the odd corner here and there with the Rotero or should they not need them for utility. But um, it's not going to be ideal for them. However, what will be ideal is all kills and P9 picking up a couple of kills, taking down Eskin Palu to kick off around and that's the dream start for them as well the first time we've seen them really have this level of dominance in the early round it may just give them that one round grace that you really want going into the second half otherwise first staring, century, first century yeah, kill. Otherwise staring down at match point basically the entirety of that second half and that is not a good position to be in what's really gonna show their kind of like grit here i think is knowing that you're 5v3 up can you slow things down can you reassess the situation can you push forward as a team and not get caught in constant 1v1s and that feels like that's what resets is after volps has already found one on Jalab, almost a second P9. Oh, Lagone is getting him in the last bullet there, down to a 3v3. And instead, I really wanted to see them hold on here. But the retake of the top floor coming out from Liquid has been sublime with two kills coming back their way. That's it. You feel like maybe uh, Vulcans have made uh, a little less progress than it appeared and that they were playing into a game plan uh, that was wait. laid out by Liquid. They're going to keep holding on to those vertical angles for the time being. Volks is very low health oh, at the minute. No. From beyond the grave with that 
cap can trap and it's all of a sudden all up to quibs in go the candelas he's just trying to find kills at this point anything he can almost catches out the oryx oh my Maybe a bit of a gunfight coming in there does eventually get it done but it doesn't matter because the call is there bolts with the impact nade from underneath and that's going to be the round for liquid a 6-0 half against falcons well i did say it would really come down to a measure of their grit as to whether or not they could hold on for a 5v3 and turn it into a round win but it proves that too much even that's too much of a an ask i guess liquid though i'll give it full credit to them great retake of the top floor and it's almost like the initial uh two kills never really came through because liquid suddenly with the one staring down through the ceiling onto site itself and going well you can't plant now you got to come and retake the top floor and they just forced that out of the other side excellently so really good stuff from liquid up six zero and I always say there are two halves to the game of Siege, Tim, but I feel like there's just a little bit of difference here between these two teams that goes beyond what side you're on. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how, how much there will be two halves of this one. Uh, the defense, of course, could be a turning point for Falcons. They've already had their tactical timeout, so there's no more work that can be done by Twister, the coach. And this is, this is always a problem to me. If you look at a team like Team Liquid with the big names they've got, and they are laughing, joking, and just quite happy in the game. I feel like you're in big trouble at that point. I think the best thing about this is look into that next series. That We all came into this expecting Liquid. That, you know, everyone at home did think it was, what, 93% to Liquid or something crazy? We're all expecting that it's Liquid that go on to play against G2 in that next game. And we've seen teams at tournaments historically where they don't play an earlier game, get caught out by teams that are coming in hot. They've already played that day. They're already at that level where they know what their energy is. They've sorted out issues in that first matchup they've had. And the team they're coming up against who's a bit kind of fresh of the day, they're coming in cold, they can get caught for a few rounds at the start. And that can often be the difference maker in map one to give that team that's coming in hot that small advantage i'm not at all saying that uh, i think liquid walk in and just walk over g2 far from but i mean this is a good way to start the round out immediately as volts just inside at 30 seconds this pacing thing will be what the real definer is for me between these guys and g2 later by the way of course if it comes around to liquid being the team to face them it will be that game of pace Again, look, we're picking up that entry. 6-1 on the entry now. Volps has had three of them himself, um, and it's just proven phenomenal in the early rounds. Now, I'm also um, interested. I don't think we've had it yet, and I don't want to... I'll, I'll wait until we finish. I'll wait until we finish. I don't, I don't want to be cast a curse in anything. I'll wait. I think you do want to cast a curse. It's him. Go on. What is it? I don't think we've had somebody survive a map with zero deaths yet for Fresh's bingo card. You think Lagonis is on to it? Certainly could be. He's on the Monte. Uh, is that actually a bingo card entry? Yes. Um, and it's five versus four. Lagonis is on the end, uh, on the Monte, so we'll see what happens. Um, certainly one to keep an eye on. Resets is going to be working his way to try and join the attack in rear stage. All kills needs to be careful here. He's maybe in a little bit more danger than he realises. He is on the Warden, so has the opportunity, of course, to avoid any utility like flashes that come in towards him. Um, but there's not too much of that, if any, actually, on the side of... Um, Liquid, they've only got the smokes for Palu, no Candelas. Uh, they do have the bees of Volps, um, but just taking the time over this one, I must yeah. say. It's a very controlling comp, right? You see the Capitan, you see the Grim. Together, they will force defenders to move away with the fire and the bees, but also gives you a lot of agency on the plant itself. Nesk was not expected to get swung like that by Valentino. Obviously, he doesn't find himself a kill just yet. I mean, Nesk himself has had a quiet few days in this tournament. Not quite the player that we all think of when we think of Nesk, and I'm sure... As the competition wears on, you may see that change. But oh. here he comes, finds one for himself. What were you saying, Des? Drops a dunk on it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think he might have heard you. Not quite that player <laughs> as he drops a 180 down the hatch and slams the man. It's, 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 more, it's more the level we've seen. Like, again, no, I totally three. agree. It was, like, it's it been a quiet tournament for him so far. Uh, but we're going to see him taken down uh. there. Bobs does manage to get quibs. And we've still got Lagonis alive on the Monty. That's going to be big in this two versus four situation. P9 trying to work in behind that broken mirror. Lagonis is going to be going for the plant here. The cover is in place. They Too know easy. where he is. Pick him up from the rotate. This is looking bad for Falcons. Volts with a double. Great closes time. it out. And that is going to be Oregon wrapped up in quick smart time. Lagonis with zero deaths tells somewhat of a story of just how dominant Liquid were in that one. Volts, especially for me, the player that I really want to celebrate. I know I wanted to see him in the second half on the attacking side and see if they'd fix those errors that they were making against DZ yesterday, but not really any chance to do so, to be honest with you. Just an absolute clean sweep for the whole team. Volts going 13-2 and two on the defense. Really can't stress how good of a confidence builder this will be ahead of playing against G2, assuming they take map two. 
Yeah, it's been uh, quite the performance from them, and G2, I'm sure, will be looking on. I don't think G2 are scared of anybody this tournament, but I'm sure they'll be watching this one with interest. Well, we certainly will be, that's for sure. For now, though, we'll go to a quick break. When we come back, the desk will break it down for you. See you in a few.
Welcome back, everybody. Here it is, Team Liquid wrap up map number one in, uh, I want to say, very effective fashion. But there's a lot of words that could be used in uh, in a situation like this. Team Liquid roll over Falcons. They have smothered the Falcons. They have, is it? They've doused water all over the fire. Yeah, I mean, they weren't hunting anything today. Those Falcons, that's for sure. They looked very unconvincing, and they looked very insecure in their place. They didn't seem like they had any sort of mentality to push through it. And then when they actually got stuck down, they didn't seem to find the tools to pick apart what Liquid put in front of them. Well, let's actually talk about what Liquid put in front of them, because big victors in this map. It's not done yet for the series. So all my Mena fans, don't worry about it. We're not out just yet, please. Let's talk about Liquid Fresh. Yeah. What made them so good? Oh, you've got to be so happy with your Liquid. I think the, the thing that made them so good was we said about how Falcons might be looking to keep things simple, how Falcons might be looking to play for the kills, play for the, the gun skills being the main win condition. Liquid said, okay, you might want to do that. We're not doing that. We're going to use power defenders, power positions, and utility to stop you from doing that. We saw Ward and Shield. We saw on the Master where they had the trophy holes and the closet rotate, both of them reinforced mid-round. We saw basically playing behind as much utility as possible. Azami was a main uh, defender for Liquid. Mm -hmm. They were trying to take the win condition and change it from gun kills, which Falcons wanted it to be, all the way through to utility. Even this round here, Volps went up and got that kill, but just before, as the Ying and the Yamaru execute was going off, the player drops the hatch and just didn't want to even try and be in that fight. And that's what uh, Liquid were doing. They were trying to force the executes in the late round. There's a term in Siege that teams do often often when they're scrimming, actually, which is let's test their execute. Oh, i.e. let's not take too many risks. Let's not try and win the round in the early game, even though you might do that normally. Let's try and see what these guys have got when they're actually executing out onto site. Liquid did that every single round. 6-0 on the defense. It was just step by step. I mean, they, they were doing everything perfectly. And when you see a team that I call it layering the onion, because yeah. you just keep like taking back one layer, taking back one layer. And that's the strength that we've seen so far from Liquid in this event. They have been really good at their defenses. We only got to see one attack, which also actually looked quite yeah. good. But then the question comes in, was that because Falcons had kind of given up already because they were zero six down? Or was it because Liquid actually had a good map overall and their attack was great. Well, let's highlight a couple players from Team Liquid. First of all, Lagotness, Lagonis, had not died a single time in this map. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's very. it's very impressive because it doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't happen often. Um, obviously, we've played, what, 1,300 rounds of Rainbow Six Siege in this tournament before today. I've obviously been tracking it for bingo-related reasons. <laughs> And it finally happened today. It's been a lot of siege. It's very rare that somebody will never die in a map. And I, I thought he put in an incredible performance. One of the two players we was looking at stepping it up. Yeah, we had two players that we wanted to step up really well. And it was Lagonis was one of them. Volps was the other. And Volps had a massive game as well, right? So we're looking at two players that we needed to step up. And just look at those numbers. 13 to 2. I was saying he was going negative. I don't remember the exact number. It was a rough time before this. We expect more of him, especially as he's not an in-game leader. And... I mean, on his own, 204 EPS. He's not good, he's a grim man, twice. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah no, he, I, excellent. Complete, it was just incredible. All right, you know what? I would like to then turn our attention to map number two, because it's clear. It was Liquid playing out of their minds, and on the other side, Falcons unable to respond in any way, shape, or form. But what happens now on map two border? This is Liquid's pick, but Falcons are on attack. Is there a change of pace here, Fabio? Yeah, there's definitely a change of pace for border. I mean, we saw that Falcons, they got put on defense first, uh, or sorry, on attack first on the last map. And they just didn't really seem to have the tools for anything. But Oregon is a step-by-step -step map. You need to do specific steps to be able to achieve anything. That's why they got rid of the Cade in the ban phase of operators, so they could easily take care of hatches. Now it's coming to a different map, a completely different map, where all this aggression on the individual performance is much more in count than it would be on Oregon. I think Oregon is like a big technical map, yeah. right? It's You've got to be technically good, you've got to be able to problem solve, and you come up with solutions on the fly. Border on that scale of like technicality is completely the, yeah. the other end. It allows a lot of individualism, it allows a, a lot of gun skill. And this is my, if, if for Liquid, the win condition when they were on the defense on Oregon was utility and playing those layers, that is significantly harder to do on Border. You've got to be an excellent team and have excellent strategies at doing it. So I wonder if Falcons will find more success on border, even though it isn't their map pick. But the Falcons have the confidence and the strength to reset and then actually be able to with those gunfights. Do they have the skill in your mind? I don't 
think they will come back from this. I, it was Fair. very, very convincing for Team Liquid last game. But as Jack said, they don't have these layers. How many layers can we really count on Border? It's maybe two or three per bomb yeah. site at most. On Oregon, it's multiple rooms and you have to clear a lot more harder angles. On Border, don't, don't, those things don't exist. So, for example, if you go for an armory attack, if you want to clear CC, you can just go from everywhere, go from east stairs, go from the window, go from break door. And then when you get to site and you have long and short the hallways on Border top floor, it's just you don't have those layers to it. Simple map. Very simple. Simple strategies that we talked about earlier on where it's more baseline and raw. We can use that very quickly. Game if ready. they can come back and reset their minds for this, I think that they do stand a good chance, Falcons. So we'll see how it goes. Momentum based. It's all about the momentum, but now I don't see them bringing it back. All right, let's take that momentum and toss it back to our casters. Ace and Dez, take it away. Thank you very much, Milos. Gotta say, I'm very large to be fresh on this one. Even if it came down to being a very simple map where the attack doesn't require a lot of sophistication, I just think we've seen Liquid dominate Falcons, not only strategically, but also in the gunfights and tactics throughout that last map. And I don't think that's going to change coming into this team, into this map, team. No, I mean, I know that it was different roster, etc. You know, a couple of stand-ins. Falcons have already been 7 0 on border by a Brazilian team. Um, you know, we saw that was uh, lost in game one. So, yes, they've got the players, you know, in that should be in and everything else yeah maybe they've got a better chance here but like you say with the way it's, it's more the, the the manner in which liquid just okay. beat them rather than the result um glass van coming out uh, from liquid to pick things up yeah a little bit of an unusual one. i mean i get it target ban okay like sure but falcons haven't exactly had you know amazing success is what i'm kind of worried about here maybe it's more they wanted to get away with the potential cheese um effort that you can get away with one glass admittedly a few teams have tried to employ glass we saw bolo picking it up for dz not really to any great effect off the back of it, though. The Monty Bang going to follow through as our second attacker, which means, Tim, that Ying is still on side. It does. Uh, it's just occurred to me as well, uh, something that we heard in the uh, the break. Obviously, we picked up on uh, Fresh's bingo card and a player having zero deaths in a map, which Lagonis was successful with. But what are the chances, Des, of somebody else doing that at exactly the same time over <laughs> on the B stream? Because Mike Hollis managed exactly that and went with zero deaths in a 7-0 on, on the B stream. Absolute perfect mirror. Yeah, I did go back in and say, I mean, I like these two bands on the defender side, by the way. Azami and Fenrir are two extremely oppressive defenders. It does leave the Solus online, but I think as we've seen from the Azami on the last map, Falcons did really struggle to break down the liquid setups with the Azami. So it feels like the most sensible band for them to give themselves a better fighting chance coming into this game. So, I imagine on the defensive side, we're going to see a lot more of that Solus. It was Volts running around on it last time around. At least here in round one, it's going to be Palu picking up those privileges and having a little bit of fun. But on the attacking side, we are seeing the Ying Tim at least being hovered for now. And I really want to see Falcons making strong use of that coming into this first half on the attack. Yeah, I think um, ultimately the Solus is, is, of, is, is of course going to be brought absolutely loads because it's border and the majority of this floor or oh, ceiling depending which way you're looking at it from let's say ceiling seeing as we're defending on the bottom floor um so the majority of it is destructible you can go anywhere other than fountain um which is not completely destructible and then you've got the uh, concrete area um in armory and that little bit there just inside a triple wall other than that everything else as you can see can be opened up there's a huge amount of destructibility between floors on this map all of cctv and because to customs, archives down into workshop and some of tellers, some of bathroom, most of armory down into ventilation. There is a huge amount of it. So yes, Solus, I think we will see get plenty of play. Interestingly, Paolo has not brought along the impact nades on the Solus, has instead opted for the bulletproof camera. Um, may well limit a little bit that ability for sort of vertical denial, needs to rely maybe on those holes already being open. Um, can just spray through the floor if they see, um, you know, the diffuser going down or anything, for example can just give it a, a, a blind spray through the floor, but uh, could be uh, something to keep an eye on. Very heavy focus out towards the west side for Falcons as well. We have got the ace of Jaylad out towards the east as well. More for the backstab potential, I imagine, than anything else. But he is very much a solo operator out on that side of the map. The rest of them trying to work their way through on the west, clearing out whatever gadgetry might come before them. You've seen a couple of those Roteros, or at least one, sorry, roll on through to start opening things up inside a server. For now, it's getting rid of things like those Valkyrie cameras, which admittedly did torment them quite a little bit on the last map. So I like that even in round one, we've seen 
Team Falcons come out with the immediate respect being shown to the operator with the IQ of P9. Yeah, absolutely. I like that they're pushing top floor as well. Um, we saw a game on board against the Sonics the other day um, where for Ventilation Workshop, for example, nice. we saw a great uh, Citizen 4K where he just showed exactly what? what come that on. Palu bringing out the aim game, but Jalad manages to get Ness. Palu is downed. Resets with a huge double, though, and Lagonis oh as well. Resets make that three for the round, and it falls apart in a matter of seconds as Liquid have all the answers once again. That's eight rounds in a row now. <laughs> and you said during the break, Des, do you think we're on for a 14 0? And I said it's very, very possible, Tim. Admittedly, again, I like that Falcons have got an idea that they've got a game plan in mind. But as you saw, everything really hinged on one, the Candela's getting through and two on removing the warden that was sat on half wall the candelas two of them were shot out immediately really good heads up gameplay for Palu to deal with that but look here on the right hand side of your screen that's the only challenge that matters on the right hand side now you've got the charge on the right coming in and literally nothing for the iq to do she's running in through smoke for example she don't know if the warden's still there or precisely where he is and instead turns for the body it's like a, a child being drawn to a candy shop just sees oh a free kill on the floor and turns for that rather than still going in for the warden instead relying on his teammate to get rid of the warden. So Liquid with a couple of layers there to make sure that Execute couldn't come off. But again, I'll give it to Falcons. Nice idea. Just didn't quite get the result they were looking for. Yep. Uh, back to the drawing board a little bit. The thing is, I, I kind of hope that they don't throw the whole idea away. I think, you know, it needs tweaks Five, rather than maybe sure. completely replace it. The pro honestly, the, you know, one of the big problems of Fresh picked up on it, um, you know, in the in the break there, you, the Falcons kind of want to come in and play for gun skill and take the fights, but Liquid are just doing everything to create situations to give themselves a big advantage in those fights. You know, they're using utility, they're using power operators uh, to enable them to say, you know what, we don't have to play the... The thing is, they probably can play the gun, sk the gun skill game, not a problem. They're winning it. They, exactly, yeah. they, they just don't even need to because they're giving themselves that advantage as well. Um, so Falcons are still continuing to struggle. But look at this, P9 making rapid progress inside of Customs for the time being. I think going hunting on that ground floor just aware that there could be somebody down there looks at maybe a surely there's barb push up metal there. but they are well aware the vault cam picks him up and surely p9's days will be numbered here does i mean there's a there's a black eye in exactly the same spot last time around which is probably the hardest part of this and sure enough just getting deleted like, no idea that Volts has managed to get himself downstairs and has ran at you across from waiting area. These are the kind of things that when you've got eight... I tell you, that's the most painful part, Tim. They had so many drones available to them. Eight. Yet only three were eight on the field. Out, eight on the field. Out on the field. They really should have had so many more of those deployed out on the flank watch. But it just feels like that sort of like core fundamental part of Siege, the information game, has been kept away here despite there being no Solus on side in this round. I don't know if that's fear in case there is a Solus that will pick them up, but until you confirm there is a Solus, until you're losing drones to her, you've got to play the game that's before you, and it just feels a little bit hesitant on that side. They knew that they needed to deal with Volps under low, underneath because they were going for the archive store planting behind the Osser shield, and the floor was opened up, and Volps was down there with a Nitro in hand, still being chased well, around by Valentino that. down there, but the clearance so is available for Jalad to potentially stick Not this. Quibbs sure. manages to pick up resets, four versus three now, and Falcons, I think this might be the time to get that Diffuser stuck down on the ground. There's nobody in a position uh, to prevent that does. happening. All kills is going to get taken out, and they can't let Liquid catch up, which is exactly what has happened as Lagonis manages to pick up Valentino. Volps, he's now trying to push around Nitro in hand. He could launch this over the top as soon as he hears that Diffuser going down. I like this that he's moved instead into the solid flooring. It does put yourself at a lot more risk, but with Quibs playing on the window, this is a really strong power position. Problem being, Volps has got a C4, and as soon as he hears this starting to go down, guess where the C4's going, Tim? Right into that back corner, and the smoke is not helping because now Quibs can't see anything. This is horribly gone wrong for them. And the C4 comes over. There's no easy cover it's available. In fact, it landed quite high, so he could still see. Got himself a 3K in the round, but has got to convert two more. He's got one to his right, one to his left, and he is toast. Yeah, Volt's not really needing to peek the last man on the window, but in a 3v1, having down the diffuser, I think he says, you know what, I'm going to take my chance. I'll see if I can double down here and find another. Um, it was really well played by Volt. So Volt was underneath on the Valkyrie the whole time. Um, 
I think if Falcons had recognized that sooner and they'd gone in and dealt with that area, it's one of the key areas. If you're going to go for an archives door plant, which they were going to do because they had the also there, um, if you're going to go for that, you need a drone in waiting. You need to know whether there's somebody playing underneath uh, those East stairs waiting for that exact denial. They hadn't done that, obviously, because they went in and then kind of find out, oh, Volps is underneath and he's, he's going to prevent us from planting here. So it just burnt away so much time and then Volps came back upstairs, he's held on to his nitro, wasn't going to be baited out by the smoke, played it fantastically well. Volps has had a great round there. Well, I just love how they've played it out because Falcons had the right two pieces in place for sides itself. They had the officer ready to get the plant down, they had the Ying of O'Kill sat on the window. What they really wanted was someone underneath looking at Valentino there on the Zofia to make sure they couldn't be threatened from below. Now, Valentino instead was pushing his way through yeah, office to kind of look into insertion. get on the backstab, stop any kind of like lateral C4 rather than the vertical one. But what I love from Liquid was rather than letting this all play out and just holding their positions, Volts not only came back after killing P9 downstairs, I believe up Metal and then forced the two versus one along with Nesk to guarantee that Valentino died. They then also ensured the rest of the map was completely clear and the last two players, the Falcons, were the ones that were looking at sight. And there's only so much you can do there. Volts had to stand and wait. They had the cross from the mirror, who was sat on metal, for example. They just played the round to perfection, removed any optionality that Falcons had. And also, think about P9's death. Uh, you know, not wanting to get too critical, but P9 comes into customs and he's looking to deal with the player next in this spot underneath. But if you're going for an archives plant, do you really need to do that? P9 was in and could go forward to challenge Volps, take Volps out of the equation, and your diffuser goes down. So I think Falcons may be just getting caught in a couple of mindsets as to what the attack really was, um, and Liquid just taking full advantage of that. So Valentino are going to be opening up that. Break room door looking to take top floor control. It's bathroom and tell us that they're attacking onto this time. Um, Nesk is up in Fountain at the minute, amongst others. So, Liquid, one wet area that Liquid can improve. I know they're 2 0 so far. One area they can improve is the entry. They've lost both of the entry kills so far. Um, so, it would be, uh, you know, an improvement for them to give themselves that advantage rather than having to play from four versus five. I mean, here at least they kept things a little bit safer with the Jackal on side. You know, the, the KB now moving over to Valentino instead sacrificing out the Zofia, which I think is a great idea because they have been stung a lot by Liquid out on their own. And this round, at least, there are more drones out on field, so they should not be getting stabbed in the back by those, by the Solus, for example, or by the Valkyrie of Volts dropping down out of seemingly nowhere. And sure enough, that composure is starting to pay off a little bit. They get themselves a kill. They get themselves a second this time round. It's Palo and Nesk, the ones walking into the angles, being held by Falcons and Tim Mona Fear has been in a 5v3 before and they threw it away spectacularly Lagona's going to start things off on that comeback for them Volts is watching the wrong side here in fact sees it but how on earth does P9 not even check the stairs on his cross almost losing his life he yeah, was very lucky to get away with that one there Volts just not quite finding the head um, but yeah Lagonis has killed certainly getting them back into things here Falcons are going to take the drop directly on into bathroom they're thinking about getting the cover. diffuser down I'm wondering that myself Des I'm not sure the yes. cover is on the hatch P9 right place right time yeah, 3 versus right. 2 now as Lagonis manages to fight back but Liquid on the back foot and this could be the first round for Falcons to collect but is there no one watching upstairs now it doesn't matter too much because they'll step away from the angles and not get exposed to it but I think Volts can now retake this hatch. You've got the Lagonis pushing in downstairs, but a great shot comes in from Valentino. And Tim, it may have been nine rounds in a row, but it feels like Falcons are finally about to be able to get on the board. Yes, it certainly does. It's all up to Volts now. We know that he's had a great game so far, but a one versus three with a crossfire established is always a big ass. And Falcons, they lock it down, guarantee that it will not be the 14-0. They've got themselves on the board. Now, what can they do with this foundation, Des? That's the big question, Tim. What else can they translate it into because let's not forget too that was the offsite for liquid that's that first quarter of rounds play we played three we'll now go back and probably see those same three sites play out again starting off events and workshop for the side of liquid it's going to be on Falcons to figure out exactly what went, what went wrong last time around. And for me, it was the Solus. We spoke about it quite a lot at the time, but they were just absolutely tormented by the Solus running around, making sure there were no drones available. And that then translated into a lack of drones in following rounds because they didn't trust themselves enough to get the drones out without losing them to the possibility of the Solus being on side. It comes back to what I spoke about in Oregon. It felt like Liquid were always one or two steps ahead. They always had a new idea or something to bring to the table that the other side simply weren't ready for. And it feels like it may well prove out to be the same again here. Big okay. change in line up here as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and no surprise, really, because 
they've already attacked onto this side, didn't have much joy. The Ying does come along again. We're going to see the Jackal switch out to the Ying. Um, but the Ying uh, didn't, again, have too much of an impact. It went in towards Palu up in Armoury. Palu was able to shoot out a couple of the Candelas uh, and just really didn't have the impact that they were hoping. So let's see what Falcons go for here. I'm particularly interested in that blitz and see what JLAG can do with the shield. Can they bully away these top floor defenders? I feel like Falcons need to create some space, something to call their own inside of this map, Des. Get themselves an area where they can lock it down and they can build from there. He's on the diffuser in hand here, so maybe more of a safety thing to try and get a plant in. Imagine if they go for something more lateral and just try and ignore the top floor. I'd be very shocked if they do. We're looking towards Candela's maybe coming in through the roof here on towards Nesk, who's sat just down below. So a bit of a coordinated play coming in here. Jalad's ready by the looks of it. They've got everything ready to make a push happen. Nest needs to know to drop away. Jalad's in underneath, but because of the flash upstairs, he can't shoot him, and that's it. A straight, easy walk in. Great play coming out of them from a bit of teamwork, but now what can they do with it? Sure, Jalad's in a good spot, but have you thought two or three chess moves ahead? Because this is where the next phase starts to break down. Four versus three now as Volks manages to pick up all kills, but the push one. keeps Someone. coming from Falcons, and this is going well. Oh, oh, my. Just going to be shut down inside a site by Nesk important kill there three versus two now as p9 is just holding long angles trying to find something and again they've just not managed to really get themselves established in the map they haven't got any serious control anything that they can sort of base an attack from bit of a target rich environment there i fear for july just didn't really know where to point his gun and instead caught no one chase both rabbits catch zero the classic saying as it goes Again, nice idea, but my only fear is that Falcons didn't give themselves too much to think about ahead of time. They thought about step one, but step two, step three, that was a nice shot coming out. But they didn't really think too many steps ahead beyond that point and have paid the price as a result. Liquid now just got to wait. There's still half the round to play here. And Quips, if anyone's been hitting shots for his team, it's definitely been him. Certainly has research, just looking to peek around this corner on the ward and he knows when the candela is coming, the push will likely follow. Not pre-firing though, and does give the opportunity oh, for the to Quibbs. take the fight. Quibbs does exactly that, and now it's a one versus oh. one, but Nesk is there. As soon as the utility comes out, smart time to peek, knows the hands won't be on the gun, and manages to pick up the kill. Yeah, nice bit of play coming out from Nest to close things out. A close round though, Quibbs almost pulling it off there, and. Look at it be kicking themselves if they're giving that round away, giving Falcons a second round on the board and their attacking side of things to then press on. Wouldn't have been good. But 3-1 down. Falcons clearly not happy with how the attacks are going here. Call themselves in another attack time out and see what can come out of the back of this one. Last time round on the first map, Tim. Didn't see too much success off it. No, it didn't really um, change anything for them. They, you know, they lost five rounds on the back of uh, the tactical timeout last time, but we'll see. We know that Twister can be an impactful coach and uh, we'll see whether he can get anything done with this one or not, whether there's any, any way that he can inspire his team towards greater things. So Falcons, um, as I say, just really struggling to get themselves established inside of the map, um, you know, create that sort of uh, foothold, get a room or two, get office, get archives, get armor, get a hold of it and be able to do some work towards site um, is something that I think has been lacking from their attacks so far. They just need to get in there, claim a bit of that map, and then they can start, you know, using the vertical, trying to push liquid around. I wonder when the second kill came through there because I know Jalab managed to get in ahead of Ness. Had the Ying come in that just like kind of took him out of action for a few seconds on Sandwich. And it was good play, but obviously as it wore off, they didn't really, again, plan for what happens next. You had to plan to get Jalad in and nothing really to follow it up. So I want to see Falcons planning a few more steps ahead here and thinking about if we can achieve X, it leads to Y and then helps us unlock Z a bit later into the round. So here we go then. Armory Archives, as you say, Tim, a pretty stock standard defensive lineup coming out of Liquid, really. Nothing too flashed worth noting here. Of course, that Valkyrie on side once again. Falcons have respected it so far with the IQ on side, but by the looks of it, that is not going to be a factor in this round. Five seconds to go. P9 instead saying, you know what, Nook sounds good. Let's go for that. Yeah. Can't really say I think of uh, uh, Border and Nook going well together. It's normally a bank association, which would be that third map if we get through to map three, though it's feeling very unlikely the longer this draws on. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, not to play rate dropping uh, quite considerably after the alterations to the nades. I think Hot and Cold probably most notably picking uh, that operator a few times uh, from memory over the event. But 
Like you say, certainly not too much of it. And here on border, I'm just sort of thinking, where are the areas that you can sort of sneak into? Where can you get a little creep going on? Um, but it's sort of few and far between, really, because the, the map is quite small. Once you start trying to get towards a room, you're usually only one room away from sight, and you're playing into an extension. But we're going to see now as P9 goes forward. Also, there could be somebody playing in at the half wall of CCTV, and this looks to maybe push in from the top of East Stairs. Quite right, sort of idea. The Pursue so seems to be around the corner or something and just getting beamed by the player that was hovering around 90. I think it's the Gonus inside of Fountain and Palu is sort of hanging around beepers. Here, look. In the spot to be able to challenge and make sure that there's going to be no free walking up that way. The Volks that manages to get that opener onto Valentino. Gilad manages to get the trade, leaving us four versus four. Bit of work being done from underneath. Not too often that you see hatches breached from underneath, but that is going to be the case. Just trying to weaken that position um, of anybody holding inside of office. Of course, they need to be careful of any utility being thrown up there. And I love how they've always got someone covering it. If Zagonis has stepped across in towards Fountain, then it's Nesk holding that angle. P9's really got to make something happen here. And those shots are not going to help because now they're going to know that he's trying to work his way through. Nesk has got him on lock here as well. Even with an nade coming on through, it's quite a giveaway as to who the operator may just be. And that's the secret of Nook now exposed. 4v4 though, Tim, and about 70 seconds still to play. The longer this runs down, the more I worry for the side of Falcons. Oh, and managed to find Nesk, and that is great for Falcons here to start building on reset. Still holding a tough position inside a fountain, just preventing any push coming from CCTV, and that might be the case very, very soon. You can just see the outline ahead of you, and he's going to hold that angle for the time being. 45 seconds left to go. Paulo Lagonis and resets trying to hold on. P9 still battling with the man underneath. Resets manages to pick up all kills. He's had so many sort of critical mid-round kills this game as resets. It's probably going to be Parley versus Jalab, by the way, for the execute on site itself. Everyone else is really just for posturing at this point, waiting really to see what resets does. Lagonis working his way down metal. There's no one down here, though, buddy. I think they're all standing above you at this point, unless P9 has dropped down. In fact, yes, P9 is down below. Jalad, though, he's still waiting. He's got 15 seconds. Tim defuses in hand. He's got to make a move soon. 15 seconds remaining. P9 is going to be looking to move up. Oh. Better look at the timing, though, as he just alerts Lagornis to his presence. It's an easy shotgun kill to bring it to a 2v2. And Lagornis manages to wheel around, get his secondary, find the headshot, make that a triple at the end. What a finish from Lagornis. Proving that he truly is the Lagortness. It's one of those timing, siege timing moments that really as well. Is. That, so that is how I see a lot of people in siege. Just disappearing <laughs> ahead of me, around the corner, just ahead and of me. And then you chase after them, they turn around and just bang you in the head. You're just like, brilliant, I love my life. Yep, yep absolutely there with you, Tim. I completely feel P9 there. I completely <laughs> feel him. Oh, it's so unfortunate because if he gets Lagonis as well, you don't see those two, three kills come in to close out the round. And maybe, just maybe, you see Falcons get another round on the board. Instead, they find themselves down four and one here for the last defense. Went pretty well in this site last time around, Tim. So if they're going to find success anywhere, it should be here. Indeed. So round six, it could be a 5-1 half for Liquid, and it could be a very quick morning for them. Um, Liquid, if they win here, will play again today. So looking, oh. you know, potentially beyond this, it was brilliant from Lagones, to be fair. Um, looking potentially beyond this matchup for Liquid, they're going to have a big game against G2 later on. And to be honest, you kind of feel like the quicker they can get this done, the better for them, because they're not getting fatigued, Second one left. down. The last thing you want is that, you know, a big sort of three maps over time, stressful game. Are you going home? Are you not? If they can just get this done, you feel like it puts them in the best stead possible to be able to go up against G2. Exactly that. Like I was saying earlier on, coming in hot to that game is like everything. Because I feel that's the team that you need to be when facing off against G2. We know, of course, that they've fallen down to the lower bracket. We can't ignore the performance they've had at this competition so far. Okay, then bathroom and towers will be the final defensive site for Team Liquid as they try to hold uh, the Falcons attack at bay for another round. 4-1 on the scoreboard so far, and Liquid looking good across. You can see Volks having a good game, Lagonis as well, 8-4, and 6-2 and two respectively, um, and really putting the work in for their team. Resets with a couple of important kills along the way, maybe not a lot, but certainly have been pivotal. Uh, Quince is going to get himself 
inside. Now, doesn't manage to take out the Goo Mine on the way in, so that's going to signal an entry likely for Liquid. They will know that somebody is inside of the building, you would expect. And that's uh, not going to slow him down too much, though. But he's able to continue pushing across into Brick Room. Slow and steady start the way that it should be. Not to find yourself getting picked off too early on in the round. And I like the Jackal respect being brought along again. We saw the Jackal to KB combo previously when they realised they were being run over by Liquid out on the roam. And not even an early roam sometimes, but here they've got an initial bit of contestation coming in. It's Ness holding off, has got the right sort of idea. Flash over the top, tucks himself in the back corner. Does he get white screen? Yes, he does. But is there any action off the back of it? The answer so far is no. Volt's taking a bit of a one versus one, really trying to keep Falcons outside the map. And so far, success. It's four versus two. You maybe say 4v3, but Quibs needs recovering. And something tells me he's not going to get saved. In fact, they use him as bait. That's the real way to use your teammates, Tim. Use him as fodder. They bring it down to a two versus two and save Quibs in the process. Great passage of play by Falcons, and they've got a chance of winning this. But everything stacks against them. Limited information, and you've got Lagonis and Resets just hiding and ratting away. Yeah, Quibs is just a little bit low health as well, which is not going to help. Lagonis had taken some damage along the way um, but you just feel like Quibs is going to be losing out in probably any gunfight he finds himself in unless he can catch somebody out he's going to be trying to move in there 37 seconds left to go just going to scan those footprints but the scan won't last long uh, given that they were green and that's going to mean it's just one or two pings for him onto resets who's just holding that hatch and this is really all that Liquid need to do just wait for the push to Easy. come resets is able to take out all kills and that's the worst one that Falcons could have lost really because Quibs it's low health as well. And now all Liquid need to do is hold across crosshire, wait for this drop to come in and just force him to take oh. engagement. But no, they've allowed him to go 1v1. Seven seconds left to go. It's up to Lagonis. He's going to get scanned now. And the pre-fire comes in two seconds. Lagonis is running. He's keeping himself safe. He's winning another round for Team Liquid. Almost again from Quibs. He's had a few good rounds in the game, I'll give him that blessing, but none really quite enough to get over the finish line and get his team to a critical round or two. Well played by looking in the two versus two. Again, shout out to Falcons. Really use Quibs as great bait in that round to net a couple of kills back to even up the scoring. But no matter which way you look at it, it's still liquid up to a 5-1 half. It won't quite be a 14-0, Tim, but it feels like we're heading towards another very strong finish for Liquid. Yeah, I feel like there's probably... I think there's maybe a, a, a timeline where Falcons can sort of feel a bit hard done to that they've not got an extra couple of rounds, but certainly, you know, they can't feel hard done to that they haven't got a map, for example. You know, Liquid have been head and shoulders above and ahead of them. Um, but there is a couple of rounds that you look at and think, Falcons maybe could have turned that around there. They maybe could have got that done. And I think they'll look at those and think, yeah, you know, we could have probably made more of a game of this so far. But uh, we head into round seven. It's going to be Falcons one, Liquid five five on the scoreboard after the first half. Um, and Falcons, it's now or never really. If they lose here, they are packing up and going home. And it is going to be a, a tough one for them to swallow, I'm sure. But Liquid um, certainly having a better performance than we saw yesterday against Dark Zero. Absolutely. On must be March then to see how Liquid can do on the attacking side. I remark quite a bit about the game versus Dark Zero and how, especially when there were roamers out and about around the map, they would get tripped up. They would get upset by the other side. Bit of a change in roles, mind you. Volt's normally the go-to Capital but player for this team. Here, he's playing across on the Hibana instead. Maybe it's a map more specific thing over anything else, but at least as it stands, you shouldn't see him running in and getting himself domed too early on this time. Let's see if uh, they can keep up the entry. They struggled, did Liquid, in the first part of the game. The first four rounds, the entry went in the direction of Falcons. It didn't really buy Falcons any rounds, but it meant that Liquid were having to fight back every time. But the last two Volps has managed to pick them up, and I'm sure they'll be keen for that to continue. Uh, and on the attack, it could be even more important to be picking up that entry so that Falcons aren't able to sort of relax back into their utility and try to hold their angles. Um, so for the time being, they're going to be keeping in hold of an extension on that top floor. Valentino's inside of CCTV. All kills is inside of office and it is an armor eight defense. So they're just trying to keep hold of as much as much sort of ground as they can up on that top floor. They don't blame them either. It's a good idea. It's a way to waste time, slow things down, give Liquid more than one thing to worry about in the round. So 
as it stands with the verticals being opened up too it will deny at least some of the downstairs play from the other side however as we always say tim there's holes work both ways and with the current strength of buck in this competition as mentioned earlier on the highest picked attacker that we have at this event purely because things like vertical nades have been taken away and buck is one of the only ones that are particularly competent at opening things up from above but that whole saying of holes work both ways really comes into effect he's got the skeleton key out quibs actually got the gun out and brings him down yeah, that was great from Quibs there. He just managed to skirt uh, with danger after the first bit had been opened up. Nice. And he was waiting for that second to give him the location. Manages to find a location for Bolt <gasps> as well with the Nitro. Jalap manages this? to pick up Nesk. And this is going all in their direction. Liquid have no idea that Orkills is just playing inside a sandwich there, waiting for his man. And he will pick him up. Palu, one versus five. Liquid staring down the barrel of being knocked for a flawless round. It's these kind of things that make me worry a little bit about Liquid. Liquid versus G2 later on again, assuming that Liquid take this 2-0. It's looking likely that they will, but there's just a general lack of awareness at points about where specific players are. O'Kills has really kept himself tucked away. Almost got caught by the player working in through bathroom and looking upwards. Oh. Palu's finding himself a couple. He was 0-3 and three earlier on, Tim. Is this where he really wakes up and wins a 1v5 to keep his team the round win? You just, you can't plan for that. No, that last shot was uh, was close no to Palu, no. really. It was an absolute beauty. But as he comes back around the top of East Thurs, the round will end as expected in a Falcons victory. 2 4 now. Um, sorry, 2 5 as they manage to make things at least a little bit more competitive um, here in the second half. They'll be trying to chain a couple of rounds together. Uh, maybe just a little bit of comfort getting themselves on defense. They can play their own game now. Um, and they don't need to be pushed around by Liquid. Um, you know, they're not trying to play into their setup. They're not having to adapt. They're not having to figure things out. And this is great from Quibbs. Like I say, he was just waiting. He knew that the book was underneath. And then the Nitro goes out. Just great command of that position. Very impressive. Really good stuff overall, I thought, for Falcons, to be fair. It's the... <laughs> Sounds bad. Probably the first round that we could turn around and say, yeah, they played this really well, but they actually have. They've sat in there and they've punished Liquid for a lack of information. Quibs especially, as mentioned, has no doubt been the standout player for this team. I know Jalad's put good, good numbers up as well. But even looking back to the last map, it was Quibs that we find ourselves talking about more often than not. Downstairs we go then. It's going to be into vent and workshop for this next defense for Falcons. Liquid. As we said so many times about this site, no doubt looking towards this top floor, trying to establish some vertical left. control and pressure, and making use of that to pull off an execute. Yes, I do still like the poor side of the Simple things, you know, and I don't need much in life. They'll drop down, I was going to say, they'll drop down any second. There they go. Uh, right, OK, round eight, it's going to be Falcons. We're not going to talk about comeback trails yet because they are a long way off one, but they've got their first defence. They now need to double down and get that second in a row. They need to hold Liquid away from map point for as long as possible because that is likely to happen at some point. And, the more time there is between now and that point, the better it is for Hello. the Balkans. Now, oh. just <laughs> having a little look with the drone, tries to hide it away, but knows that the uh, the game is up. It took him a few seconds to actually lose it or after he got off it, but he pretty much said, yeah, this this, is, this drone is not going to get saved when there's a solar stair in there at the so it just bails off that and then his head turns towards the actual round itself. Now, what I love actually is the willingness to throw drones in against this solar here and hunt her down. Make sure that the team are able to pinch things in here, but it's going to be this pace now from Liquid and how quickly they can shut around Valentino and close those walls in that will really make a difference. And the answer so far is it's been very tentative, a little bit cautious, not wanting to overexpose themselves, and I don't blame them. Last thing you're going to do when you've been trying to zero in on a Solus and find yourself getting beamed by someone else who's playing support. Paolo uh, going to be sending the Bravo drone in. Somebody, one of the analysts actually mentioned it yesterday, I think it was. Paolo had been playing Twitch and he said they'd rather see the switch over um, to Bravo because just the, the, you know, the drones were offering better utility, um, arguably the guns a little bit better. The F2 now very difficult on the recoil, not for somebody like Paolo, I'm sure, but um, it was just a, a, you know, a consideration that maybe Bravo would be more effective for him. Um, and that certainly seems to uh, to be the case with him switching over. He's dealt with a couple of those laser gates now. Uh, he's will be taken down, but Reset is going to open things up by taking down oh. Valentino, though, absolutely removing Palu from the archives window. Beaming him is anywhere I can really describe it. Tomo, but Nask is in, gives himself away a little bit, and Jalad is there for the trade. It's good play from Falcon so far on the defence, always playing close to each other as well, trying to guarantee as many trades as they can when it comes down to it. 3v3 with 60 seconds still to play. It's a lot, to, a lot of time to work with here on the side of Liquid, but Falcons can see holding strong. 
Here we go then, P9 just going to be racing around sight on his little go-kart of a Yokai drone, um, just using it much like an attacker drone really to try and find a bit of information. What's going on? Where are they pushing from? Um, you know, can he give his team any intel that's going to help over the next 40 seconds as Ligonis tries to get that top floor opened up a little bit. They don't have a lot in the way of vertical destruction. They've got a soft breach charge left on the ace of vaults, but other than that, they're pretty much limited to making use of that DMR or maybe a couple of those ex Kairos pellets, but they're not fantastic mm -hmm. for opening up any sort of great lines of sight. I was going to say the problem is Luka have got a lot of the control that they need here to make a plan happen and sure enough they move into Kovrov Lagonis planting just inside server as you can see up on the table and they've got the angles they need Falcons set off a little bit too much here and they're giving them a way back in oh kills can't find the last Lagonis yet again is the one opening things up for his team it's a commanding lead now for Liquid and a big comeback required from Falcons Okay, then 6-2, and I spoke too soon. I said that Falcons needed to hold Liquid away from that map point opportunity for as long as possible, and unfortunately, in the they very next round, round <laughs> the very next round, Liquid were able to get themselves onto that Magic 6, ready to take not just the map, but the series here. This will put Liquid through into a matchup with G2 later on today. Um, another game that will be do or die. I mean... This, this We're going to have a run. huge order going home at that point. One of them is going to go home. Falcons will be sent packing after this one should they lose it. <laughs> Look at that, Lagonis. He's at, I've, I'm going to give Lagonis a shout here. It's not just about the support work that he's done so far today. He's actually had a great game uh, against Falcons. He's been pivotal for Liquid, and he's just been you know all over the place. Some important kills, plants, holding down sight. Uh, really, really good player from Lagonis. I agree. Really excellent series overall. You know, again, Vault's probably the man that I'll shout out as my MVP for this series. I'm sure the stats will reflect just as much given he's gone 10 and 7 here as well, but stand out in the sense of we've seen a lot of the mistakes from yesterday being cleaned up. His play on the defense has been absolutely sublime. Say what you want about the level of competition he's coming against. You can only play the game put before you, and he has risen to match the occasion. I really hope that continues against G2. He will have a much harder time, and the only thing that I'm worried about for Liquid is... And again, no big disrespect to Falcons. This has been a much easier game than what they can expect to face against G2 later. But I'd hate for them to come into it a little bit lethargic, a little bit kind of relaxed. I know I said about them coming in hot is definitely a piece to it, but you come up against weaker opponents, it does kind of like allow you to be lazy with your gameplay. You can make little mistakes that you'll get away with. And the last thing you want is for that to become your air quotes muscle memory for the day. <laughs> it certainly, that, you could you could tell that I was just sort of giving it a second to hold my ear open for the uh, the B stream on the other side. We're here, um, and Hap going absolutely wild at the minute. Um, Nesk is going to take a little bit of damage, just trying to get in there, and resets Good takes job. an awful lot more as Jelad manages to pick him up there. Five versus four, and Falcons might just be able Ooh, to cheeky. keep themselves holding on. Jelad's in a good spot here, actually. Might be able to get through and get one, but no! Nesk was there, the crossfire was ready at the same time, mind you, so it wasn't the easiest one in the world, but it's a good attempt by Jalad to try and upset the apple cart a little bit, keep Liquid asking questions. 4v4 things down then, still half the round to play though, Tim. Lots more to figure out. Lots of things to Liquid to figure out. Palu, he just knows! Manages to get all kills through the soft wall, yeah, cuts nine. him down, and what a kill from Palu. Three versus four now. P9 low health as well as Falcons try to hold on. This could be their final one minute 15 of the six invitational 2024. They've had a, a fantastic year, really, and the ability to get here has been something else, but they're just struggling to cling on at the minute, coming against one of the all time big teams in Siege. And Lagornis just peppering oh, his man, but the again. call comes out. Volps manages to pick him up. Jawad is going to pick up a kill onto Ness with that EDD, but Lagornis now has the space to get this diffuser down. And then they've got the vertical. Yes, they have. I saw Valentina moving across the top floor and thought, has he found the angle? The answer is yes, and P9, a couple of quick kills to close things down in round nine. Falcons hold on, at least for now. Deciding that, yeah, it's not the time. They haven't finished playing their six invitational siege and they will be holding on for a little bit more. They like what they're seeing and they want another round or two. Falcons trying to fight their way back in. It's going to be three more rounds that they require just to take themselves to overtime. A lot of work ahead of them, but 
They've shown us once or twice over the year that they do have the capability and they right. will be trying to get it done. Just a couple of kills coming out because again at the very end there you saw this two-man crossfire coming in from Liquid. And although this is a real like pedantic point to go into, but that was a very, very small window into some of the issues that we saw from Liquid versus DZ yesterday. Although there was only really what? a second, maybe even half a second between the two swings coming in from the Liquid players. That was the kind of stuff that DZ were punishing them for, whereas when DZ was swinging, they, were, they had like three players all on point at the exact same moment, hitting their shots, and the defenders just simply had no chance in a two or a three versus one to be able to deal with that. Whereas their Pinons had time to take the first gunfight, kill the player, turn around to his left, and immediately lock on for the second. You give teams at the top level the smallest window to be able to take two separate 1v1s, they will take it. And so that's small again insight into what I think might come to bite Liquid in their game against G2. Round is round 10 now, and we're going to be heading back up to the top floor. It's Armoury. Last time Falcons defended this was back in round seven, and it was one of the successful defences that they have had. Um, but you just feel at the minute like they're sort of on the edge of the road. Oh, but no! no! Oh, oh, gives himself away way too easily. It's the oldest trick in the book, and he falls for it as P9 picks up a great opener for Falcons. Shows that even the most experienced among us can still get caught out by the absolute base. E6, Tim, that one. Straight out of everyone's first-born peak playbook, I'm pretty sure. A nice early one to find, though. It's that Grim taken offline. We spoke a lot about how he's a real space-making operator. Drop down those bees with the common launchers. And suddenly defenders have to scatter. Either that or you stay still and find yourself murdered. So good pick to find, I think, in the early round. Arguably the most impactful coming into this round outside of maybe the Ostra of Lagonis. Do they know? I don't think do they do. Know? just takes a little spray through the wall there. At least tells Jawad that there's somebody in that area. He's going to be hunted down now, but Volks could come away with a kill. Gives it to Quick Beat. <laughs> goes for the skeleton key. Opens up the extra angle, but great teamwork from Falcons as Jawad is there to pick up his man. But then oh, the Lagonis comes in for the trade. How many times are we going to see Lagonis keeping Liquid in these rounds that they ultimately go on to win? And a great performance from him today continues. You really want to get someone, I think, on this archives window. No one's yet made a real play for it. Assuming, of course, that's where they want to plant. But I'm just seeing now both Lagunas. Well, Lagunas is full charge towards East Stairs at this point, right near where P9 currently holds. I imagine around the outside of the map. And maybe there's going to be a different angle of attack coming in here. They may have abandoned entirely the play in towards the execute of archives doorway. Gotta be careful, mind you, because P9 is now getting hunted. Yeah, he's gonna be getting put under some serious pressure here. Lagonis taking Good a play. lot of damage there, but it does allow Nest to level things up. Three versus three now. Still, the Orsa will make things difficult for Falcons. Those shields always tough to play against and always giving a little bit of space when it's needed to get that plant down. 40 seconds left to go, and I'm not sure that Liquid have got a plan to deal with all kills just yet. No. And if they're gonna, they need to do it quickly. I don't know if they know that he's a thing, to be honest with you. I mean, they've got the right sort of idea. Both C4 players are holding way back. If he wins that fight, that is everything. But again, there is a trade there. These Liquid players have grouped up and started moving as a unit of three around the map, using the Ostra as the kind of Monty-esque style operator to collect information for them. And they've got themselves on West Main. You've got the Warden and the Capcan sat on site. They have not moved because they've got the C4s in back pocket. And I just fear with Lagonis' HP, this round is toast. Yeah, I think it's probably just a little too little too late here from Liquid. Lagonis has no option oh, to try and throw the diffuser down. Valentino hits the bullseye with a double on the nitro. Beautiful stuff. And that is going to be the round for Falcons 4-6. And I think it's about time to start thinking, could this be a comeback? Imagine, imagine. It's six and four and Liquid are letting these rounds slip away from them. They had such a monumental lead. 5-1 at the half. Falcons, Falcons have really enough. woken up the last couple of rounds as well. They, they have. And the beautiful thing is, is that team play coming in, you know, look at when, for example, Liquid step forward and someone finds a kill. Think about Volps on the downstairs inside a workshop. Sure, he gets a kill, but immediately there is a player behind him that turns around and gets the next. And then look at even when Liquid do manage to get themselves in a trade-based scenario, like the end of the previous round, P9 in a one versus two, but broke it down into two separate one versus ones. Beautiful stuff to see. And I just fear that at this point, Liquid may actually be letting this go towards overtime. Admittedly, we've got to go through the offsite here of Bathroom Tellers. If Liquid don't win this one, I can see Falcons taking it from there. 
I would agree. Um, they're certainly going to be doing a lot of damage to the mental of Liquid at the minute. Liquid do, of course, still have a timeout in pocket. Um, we'll see whether Hugzord chooses to to pull the to pull that one out of the bank or not. But for the time being, they're going to be going for it again. They will be attacking this time onto Bathroom and Tellers. And you know, the, the, the facial expressions, the general energy for Liquid has certainly changed over the last couple of rounds. I commented how earlier it looked like they were just having so much fun playing. And, you know, there was so much positive energy in there. And I just wonder sometimes with this team, you know, we've seen it when they get put under real pressure, do they stand up to it as well as others maybe? How the tides have changed. How they have changed. All right, then. Loving the comp coming out of Liquid in this round. Feels aggressive, Tim. Couple of globals in the form of the yeah. Finker and the Takebi coming in. But also that Ying. I spoke about Ying to the death at this point. And the thing is, there is no Warden on the other side in this round. If they make good use of this Ying, get those Candelas in the right place at the right time, can capitalize on the back of it with Iana charging in with the Air Axe, with Bolts running in on the Blitz as well, they could completely bowl over the other side. But Tim, already they've only got three drones left. Falcons have chewed through Liquid's Intel game, so this could be a very blind execute coming in. Yeah, you'd have to assume uh, that P9 has been the one that's been uh, going through and finding that utility. And as you say, just fantastic removing it all. And it just really leaves Liquid in a tough position, uh, you know, having to function without any information whatsoever. Out goes the call. That's going to help mm, the push to come it. through. But then Volks changes his mind. He's not going to go in through break. Instead, he's going to look to push towards the top of East Stairs instead. But there's one underneath. He sees his man halfway finding Valentino, however, finds resets and manages to get a big opener for Falcons. That's all you need sometimes, that one entry. That's the Yana taken offline. Yes, no massive crucial utility, but resets was really coming in here as one of the main entries for this team in the round. Lagonis also falling down. I believe there might have been a second call still left in pocket. I didn't see the use of it. Candela's finally come in. The globals get hit and the push begins. But there's no one on the upstairs. Here is the problem, Tim. So all that effort really for nothing. It certainly has been. Falcons have done a, a great job of this, really. Just, you know, wasting the time, getting the kills, dropping away, keeping themselves alive. Just seems like uh, Liquid are really off the pace over the last couple of rounds. Volps does manage to get all kills with the pistol. 50 seconds left to go, though, and no real control over sight. They do still have the Candelas that they can play in behind, but <laughs> they need to get themselves over to the other side of the map here, Liquid. Let's not forget, this is a bathroom and teller's objective. It is not workshop, and we're going to see Volt getting no, in there. No. And he will continue fighting. You picked up on the Finker earlier. And what an impact Nesca's just had. <gasps> and he's getting himself on the side as well. This would be the biggest from beyond the grave you've ever seen if he can pull this off. Down to a two versus two. Palu hits the deck. There's 20 seconds to go. They've got one more juice thing. Get him back up in a moment. When he gets back on his feet, here we go. They've got to try and make this work though, Tim. They're still so far across this map. They've got to cover. Got to get inside bathroom. And Jalad and P9 have got all they need to bring this one back their way. A couple of kills come in. Ness finds one more. P9 doesn't find his man. And the cross has been held. The Finker may be the MVP in this round, though. P9 full flash out. Diffuser is down. P9 finds it down onto one. And he finds a second. P9 keeping Falcons alive. What a round we've just seen. What an unbelievable play from the Solis. Even moving through a Candela wasn't enough to earth. stop him. Liquid almost grabbed it right at the end there. They played it brilliantly. Ness getting across, Palu on the cover, but P9 had all the answers, and Hugzor's face just says it all. Liquid are stunned. <laughs> it sounds like the other streams had a moment at exactly the same time. What is going on? All four of us came out of our rooms at the same time, like 7 0. Yep, 7 0. And we thought, man, these series are just going to be a bowl over. But Falcons have battled their way back. They looked like a shadow of what we've seen from the men in region at previous events. And then here on this map, my God, have things turned around. One round away from balancing things up and sending us into overtime, Tim. And there it is the tactical timeout from Liquid. As expected, really. I've commented on it previously that we hadn't had it 
pulled yet. And that Hugsdor did have the opportunity to just try and break the little bit of momentum of Falcons. But I can't help but repeat what I said earlier. And that is there are some sullen faces. Things are looking a little bit dire on the liquid side of this game at the minute, you know, compared to how they looked earlier when they were bouncing through that first map. And all of a sudden on their own map choice of border, Falcons are really pushing them to the wire. P9 having a great round. Look at this, uh, fully flashed out. And then look at the awareness straight in. He's kept moving through that Candela. He's been aware of how far he's moved forward, of where the shower cubicle is, of where the plant has gone down and where he needs to challenge that first man. Great stuff from P9. I'll tell you what, that takes some balls. It really does. That. To that keep running in balls. when you white flashed. Yeah. And let's not forget, if P9 dies there, Falcons go home. Yeah. Everything is on the line. But obviously the one thing to consider is the last thing you expect right, someone to do when they're full right. white screen is run at you. For very good reason. They can't see you, yeah, but just yeah, as the screen starts to recover, ball. it's enough for him to get back Great into things. Awareness. And I think the thing as well is the turnaround from Nest. Polly was on the assumption that he would round his head towards the rotate in between yep. sites rather than running straight through the middle door. You will ask questions, you know, where was Palu looking at that point? Was he expecting him to rotate into workshop instead? I don't know. But the two angles that Liquid were covering were not the ones that P9 chose. What a round we have just witnessed. And it could be, as said Tim, what sends us through to overtime. Here we go, though. Not quite Hail Mary coming in, but already Candela's being dumped inside a sandwich here. Liquid wanted to get themselves inside this top floor. Nice and quick, create some room. Got the EE1D coming out on top as well. But Nesk is in. They want to catch the drops. He's found himself one man. Where do they go? Because they can't get out of this top floor. Nesk has found a second. They've cracked things open. They've forced them down into the piranhas pit. And Nesk stands there waiting. Plant goes down, Quibbs finds one. Surely we don't see another round like the last one, Tim. It's gonna have to be something seriously special. It'll be a 1v5 ace clutch if Quibbs can pull this out, but he's low health already. Liquid have had no. time to get outside and reset. Shows how Liquid managed a perfect reset. They got it done after that tactical timeout, and you just feel like the words said were right. Come on, enough is enough now. Let's go and show them who we are. And Nesk did exactly that straight into sight like a spear to the heart getting two kills opening things up and team liquid finally managed to take it heartbreak on the face of falcons and it's understandable there's after that gargantuan effort that they just put in on border you can see how it was a play coming straight out of scrims as well i mentioned it at the time but the candela's flooding that top floor forces everyone to drop hatch to run away and who's waiting who else other than nest to catch you as you have flee to what you assume is absolute safety, but it turns out not to be. Good play coming out of Liquid to close things out, but my God, was it close. That round 11, I remember that one for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's not the ideal finish for Team Liquid when they're looking towards the remainder of the day, really. You want to be coming into that fixture hot, you know, not having Falcons run four rounds back at you, but one way or another, Liquid, they get the job done, so show some great mental perseverance um, and a great tactical time out there, I think it's got to be said. You know, that's obviously a little pocket play that's been brought out. Look, let's stop messing about here. Let's just get aggro, get into sight and put that diffuser down and it's worked a treat and now they've got the reward of facing g2 but before we start talking any more about that we'll throw it over to our desk who no doubt i've got plenty to say over to you thank you very much ace and des and yes we do and for that we actually have someone on the special guest lagonis L or what do we say lagonis, lagonis. yeah lagonis. there you go joining us here on the desk major champion and now here at si looking to prove the rest of the team at Liquid. Welcome. Congratulations on the win. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm very happy that we won. Uh, it was a little tough match in the second map. In the first, we were, you were really good. But yeah, I'm happy and looking forward to, to face G2, uh, G2 right now. Yep. Obviously, you're in the lower bracket. Yep. Things haven't gone necessarily too well this SI. Uh, what do you think are the reasons for that? Sorry, can you repeat? Um, yeah, so like, what mistakes have you made to end up in the lower bracket? Uh, I think like yesterday, like it was a really tough match for us. Like uh, the coordination uh, from VC was really good. Uh, our game playing, like we have a good game plan for that match, match yesterday, but we could not put inside the match what we have uh, talked to each other. That was bad. So we planned something and we could do in, in, in the match. So I was a little bit sad about this. Uh, but yeah, now we are in the lower bracket and the, the run is long, so I hope 
I hope to at least we qualify to the main stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, so G2 are coming up. Uh -huh. um, obviously, you will be going up against Alamal. Uh -huh. um, how do you feel? Because um, the last time Alamal played you, you beat him. Yeah. So it's always always fun to, to face Alamal. Like, right now we are in different teams, of course, but I know uh, his personality and yeah. he, he knows very well my personality. Like, we share the same room on, on the game house when we we live together. So yeah, I'm faced to, to face him. I'm happy to face him. And let's see who won. Do you think that he struggles against Brazilian teams? Um, I, I don't know, like a little bit. Like yesterday they lost against FaZe on the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Major. They lost for us and from W7M on Atlanta. So yeah, I think a little bit, but they got Hamali right now. So yep. he has a good uh, insight of how Brazilian teams play. So I'm happy to, to have this battle again and let's see what he can do first. I mean, there's one thing that I noticed that the team was quieter than what we're used to uh, over the past couple of days. Why has that been the case? I hear you constantly talking, giving calls and everything, but the atmosphere seemed calmer than usual. You mean today or in the other I days? mean, today specifically, well, even with the win. Yeah, I think like today we were very calm because like the match, the match was not that difficult, especially in the first map. Like we were, it was going all right. Like everyone was communicating a little bit. So yeah, today was a calm, uh, a calm match, but yesterday was tough. Like we could not scream because we just like won one, one round on Night Haven Labs. So yeah, we are feeling match, match after match. And yeah, that's it. How's the pressure? You ready to take it on? Yeah, the pressure is always there. Like we know that the liquid crowd is like giant. So yeah, we have the pressure. And at, as I said to you guys, at least I want to make the, the main stage. So yeah. Do you want to say that to all the fans out there? Can you say it in Portuguese? <laughs> yeah. Uh, para todo mundo que torceu para nós aí, muito obrigado. E a gente quer muito chegar lá na, na, na arena principal, então espero que a gente consiga e a gente está batalhando para isso. That's it. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, much. Lagones. Congratulations, Team Liquid, on the victory. Go ahead, Thank get you ready much. for your next game. Fresh, what a game we had. Falcons almost clawed it back, but still, Team Liquid they have the experience, we expect them to be more comfortable, and we got that at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that's exactly, you know, we, we were going into this this match, me and Fabian, especially on the pre-desk, and we were saying about how maybe it might be a little bit closer than expected. I think the result, and even the scoreline, was absolutely as expected. Obviously, Falcons mounted a little bit of a comeback. We said it, you know, I said it would be a very momentum-based game. 7-0 into 5-1 into more dominant halves and obviously Liquid just had enough quality to get over the line there on border. It was just a question about time of when they would finish up that game. Like they just needed that one last round when they had six and you saw them when they won. It was so relaxed, yeah. so calm. They, they, this was more of a game, get through it, get over it, prepare for the next one. And I think that was the expectations before the game and I think that that kept throughout all of it. All right. I mean, at the end, yeah, like we said, Team Liquid on top, but I feel up next is their greatest challenge. Do you think, after having seen them in this game fresh, that Liquid have what it takes to take down G2? Honestly, it's quite a hard barometer. I think, you know, Falcons didn't put up anywhere kind of close to a fight that G2 will put up. Even though we talk about G2 potentially having that, you know, mental block against Brazilian teams, Liquid will fear G2 just as much as G2 will feel liquid. Well, if you're liquid and you notice him, obviously from your experience, Fabian, what are things that need to be worked on quick before that game? I mean, both Lagones and Wolf step up massively today. So they have that like more momentum coming into the game. Mm -hmm. Sure, we saw a little bit worse of a performance from Nesk and Palu, but if they can do what they did in groups and then we can get the Lagones and Wolf we got today, I think they're standing a good chance. I think that the strategical depth of of Falcons was so shallow that it's very hard as a player, especially when you're an experienced player, because you make assumptions. And those assumptions is movement, decision making, and when you're inexperienced as Falcons, playing with a more aggressive loose style, well, assumptions will most likely be wrong. All right, let's take a look at our Intel play of the game. Play of the game. Put it up on the screen. There it is. And it's on Forbes. Fresh, cut us through it. Yeah, again, we were looking for him to step up. I thought this execute on Oregon was actually a really good one. It was very basic laundry freezer, but Volps was making things happen on the Grim. Grim's such a good operator as well, just generally coming into um, the way that we've seen him at this event because he provides such intel, that bounce mechanic that they had. And we, Volps was the one we were looking to step up. So mm -hmm. it was good that we saw him make those plays as well. Hopefully he has the confidence in himself now to be going on to make those plays when they play G2 later today. 
I just think it was a great game. I think the Falcons made some mistakes there. For example, the ban on Monty on the second map didn't really make sense to me. But I think that Liquid, they, they, they have what it takes to give G2 a real match. All right, well, Falcons, they bow out of Six Invitational. Personally, as a person from MENA, I give them big commendations. Yep. Well done, Shabib. Next time, I, I can't wait. They'll play better next time. I'm very proud of them to make it here. Though, here is our bracket in front of us. There's still matchup going on on B-Stream. I won't spoil that for you. We'll get to see it on Rainbow Six Bravo. However, we just saw our matchup move. Team Liquid will be playing against G2, bleed up against Space Station Gaming. And then we'll move on for our final game of the day. We've yet to know, we've yet to know how that kind of shapes up, but you'll have to stick around to see more of it. Gentlemen, closing thoughts on this game. I think it was an enjoyable game, but again, as I said, it's one that Liquid needed to get over. They did. And now I'm more excited for them against G2. Yeah, yeah. Liquid absolutely met the expectations. And again, it's the step up for G2, <laughs> literally repeating what Fabian said. I think for Falcons, again, just a quick word, is like, again, expectations for Falcons over the course of the year, they would have wanted to make this event. That's expectations met by being here. They obviously had a turbulent event as a whole, could have done better in their minds, will be disappointed, but the year for them has been great. I tell you, as an Arab myself, it's not easy to get visas done on time. So <laughs> yeah, we're thankful when we can actually make it happen, yeah. including myself for this event. So here we are. Anyways, thank you very much, Fresh and Fabian. We will take a break and then we'll be back for halftime show. It's a special one. Stay around.